Hey, good evening. This is Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with a review of the uh, daily trading plan for December 31st, 2012, and a case study in our new indicator, the uh, Risk Z indicator. And uh, what we're using is a comparison of the 30 period and the 10 period moving average of the VIX index. We're dividing the 30 by the 10 and coming up with a number if it's if they're identical values, then it's at 1.0. So, uh, if it's less than 1, then we're calling that risk off. If it's greater than 1, we're calling that risk on. We're also c computing a risk z-score uh, using a 5,000-day look back and uh, using that to compute the number of standard deviations the current value of that index is against its uh, long-term average. Uh, on at the close of business Friday, or uh, in other words, Sunday evening before uh, the Monday trade, uh, that value was at 0 0.90, which worked out to be a risk Z score of minus 1.26. Here's a six month time uh, series chart on that. And what you can see is, is that in the last six months, uh, that risk Z has only gotten below one, uh, minus one four times. In both cases, when they're uh, turn was made, uh, there were sh big sharp moves uh, here, here, uh, and here, and so this is the fourth one, and so we were, w we noted that condition along with a 10-day uh, NDX reading of three for oversold, and so we were alerted to the possibility of there being a potential strong reversal from oversold conditions based on the 10-day NDX and then the VIX, VIX risk z-score. So uh, today what happened is we have the open uh, large gap down and now we're looking at SVXY which is the inverse VIX and uh, you can see in, in all the blue circles are um, chart conditions or, or uh, price conditions where uh, we make meaning out of the regression line crossover and sideways quiet channel uh, technique. Uh, during this upward move in, vol in the inverse volatility, uh, that corresponded with uh, upward moves generally in the market today. Uh, and so we were actually trading the, uh, the Russell 2000 and Cliff's Natural Resources, which were making very strong moves inside here. This is a very tradable move on its own. I mean, it's going from a low down here around 59 uh, up to 61.3. Uh, so there's some significant moves going on inside there, but we just happen to be in the Russell um, for uh, and, and Cliff's Natural Resources for reasons of um, personal preference and timing, I suppose. Uh, and so what happened was uh, the morning run uh, came up uh, outside of the river into the floodplain here, which is that Bollinger Band 30 with plus or minus 2, and then uh, the blue area is plus or minus 1. Uh, volatility trailed off. The market itself kind of trailed off. Uh, we started looking at volatility, ready to trade the volatility here. Uh, we had a regression line crossover outside of the river, uh, it blew right through the Bollinger Band mean, and we bought um, on trade number one an entry at 61.20 uh, when it left the river uh, with a 30 cent initial stop. Uh, it had a nice run up, uh, pulled back just to the edge of the river, a nice another run up, um, I stuck around too long on this one. Uh, it came and I got a entry or an exit excuse me back by 6170 and gave back way too much uh, this is a horrible exit for me um, if I was going to get out here I should have gotten out over in here and uh, and captured much more of this move smooth however we get an exit at 6120 and that's a 1.3 R uh, shortly after the exit it, it finds support right where it's supposed to at the Bollinger Band main and then starts a, a sharp reversal for about 10 minutes and then leaves the river and so re-entry is the uh, key to sanity, so we get our, uh, our re-entry, in other words, entry number two at 62.10, so we, uh, we gave up 40 cents here. What I liked about this one was it had made a nice strong move. There were some good noises coming out of Washington, D.C. Uh, the 30 period regression line, more importantly, had stayed in the uh, floodplain uh, all the way up and never even got back into the river, so uh, this re-entry felt natural. Uh, so at 62.10 with a 30 cent initial stop, it takes off right away. Um, got a little bit overwhelmed by the uh, initial move up to 63.5, uh, or I should have had another entry 
uh, in around here, around 63. But we get our third entry, or entry two on this re-entry, at 63.50 with a 30 cent initial stop. Uh, goes up, it's a, a runaway freight train by this point. Get our fourth entry in, we're a third position at 64.50. It runs up to 65.50, almost 65.90. Uh, and then the pullback uh, exit everything at 65.25 and so the first cycle this first cycle here is 1.3 R uh, and then the combination of these three positions uh, give us 10 and this is a 10 and a half R on the first re-entry uh, five and a half on the second re-entry two and a half on the third re-entry or a total of about uh, about 20 R on that afternoon trade uh, so it was a pretty good day uh, a good day to be prepared and the point I want to make here is is that um, when these uh, extreme volatility conditions occur, uh, they don't occur that often, so you've got to be uh, prepared uh, for those kinds of moves. And um, if we were uh, to look at, at the health check chart, which you get is this elephant bar looking thing, this uh, giant, this is a daily chart in the S&P. You can see it moved from the low part of the river all the way up to the uh, uh, to the edge of the high river here. That's a perfect day for a frog, perfect day for intraday trading um, well, with size. Uh, so uh, the main point I want to make there on this one again is just a preparation. Um, uh, we were prepared for a reversal. We weren't predicting it. Uh, it just so happened that it happened. But again, part of being lucky is being prepared and anticipating this kind of a move. So. Uh, that's Ken Long from Tortoise Capital with the review of the trade of the day for December 31st, 2012. We hope to see you in the new year and uh, keep your powder dry and your risk measured.